A teenager vanished off the face of the earth back in 1972, and they still do not know where she is. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Carlene Tangelson. Viewer discretion is advised. This case occurred in the town of Macon, Georgia back in 1972. Back then the population of Macon was somewhere around four or 5,000 people. It was a quiet, peaceful community. There really wasn't much crime to be heard of back then. Carlene Tangleson at the time this case happened was 16 years old and she had just completed her sophomore year over at Southwest High School. Carlene was a good student, she got good grades, she was popular, she was well-liked. She had a boyfriend that she was really close with. She was one of four total siblings and she got along really well with her siblings. Her younger brother would say that Carlene would basically drop anything and everything if he needed help. Like if someone was picking on him, all he had to do was yell her name and she would just come out of nowhere and just like be there to protect him. She was incredibly protective of him. She shared a room with one of her sisters. They, you know, had normal sister little spats here and there. Carlene was considered kind of a a messier uh, kid. So her half of the room was always kind of cluttered and messy while her sister's half of the room was always neat and tidy. Sometimes this caused little issues, but for the most part, I mean, this was just typical sibling type stuff and they loved each other very much though. Carlene had also just gotten her driver's license uh, literally like a week prior to this case occurring and she was beyond excited. She finally was able to drive and the family owned this little uh, Pontiac station wagon or big Pontiac station wagon, I should say. And that was going to be the car that she was going to be allowed to drive around. June 21st, 1972 was the very first time that Carlene was given permission by her parents to drive that car. She was supposed to leave the house that early afternoon to go pick up her sister from a, I guess, a little summer camp that was going on. So Carlene leaves earlier than she had to in order to pick up her sister because she wanted to go to the Westgate shopping plaza area. Before she left the house, she actually invited her younger brother and older sister, hey, do you wanna come along with me? Both of them said no. And you kind of have to always wonder like if they had gone, would things have turned out differently or would things have turned out even worse for this family? But they both stayed home and once Carlene left that house, she's never been seen again. At around 4 p.m., 14-year-old Jonette Tangleson calls the house and says, hey, what gives? Carlene isn't here. She was supposed to come pick me up. Her mom was like, oh, don't worry about it. She's probably just running a little late. I know she had gone to the, the shopping mall earlier, so maybe she got caught up talking to friends or her boyfriend, because her boyfriend worked uh, kind of near that shopping mall. She said, just give her a few more minutes. She'll be there, don't worry. An hour goes by, Jonette calls back at the house. Hey, she still isn't here, where's Carlene? At that point, her mom's like, okay, this is definitely very strange. That's not like Carlene. She wouldn't really do that kind of thing. And so the older sister of the family, she ended up going to pick up the younger sister from this university where this summer camp was being held at. And then after like another hour or so, Carlene's mom is like, God, I something something feels off here. This isn't like her. And she's really debating, like, do I call Arnold, the her father? Because Carlene's dad, Arnold, was on a business trip out in Florida, roughly five hours away. He had, he had actually driven there. But once it became nighttime and Carlene still wasn't home, she said, all right, I'm calling him. And so she calls the hotel where he was supposed to be at. And he had literally just checked into the hotel. And it, this there's like, a, I guess, a torrential downpour or borderline hurricane 
happening in Florida at that time. And once he found out that his daughter was missing, he said, I don't care. I will drive through that hurricane if I have to. And that's what he did. He got into his car and he sped all the way back home. Joan, Carlene's mom, calls the Macon Police Department and says, hey, my daughter's missing. They're like, meh, she's probably just being a teenager. She'll be home later. Don't worry about it. We can't do anything about it. And they just said, sorry. They got out there and they started, the family did, started searching for Carlene and searching for the car. They went to the Westgate Shopping Mall Center, which is no longer, I guess, in existence. They drove around the parking lot. They looked everywhere. They could not find Carlene. They could not find the car at all. And they looked in every parking spot possible. Then they start getting on the phone. They start calling all of Carlene's friends. And they're like, did you have plans with her? Do you know where she is? All of them say, no, we haven't seen her. We had, we had no plans to hang out. And so they had no luck there either. Carlene's boyfriend who worked, I guess, at a store off, just off of the mall, like, but in the same shopping center, he told the family that when he got off of work that evening, that he had a note uh, in on the uh, windshield underneath the windshield wipers from Carlene. Basically, the note said that she had gone into his work, but he was busy, and so she didn't get to you know see him. And she said, "Well, I'll see you later tonight." because uh, they had plans to, I guess, go out that night. She never obviously showed up for that date. And they can confirm that the boyfriend was at work uh, throughout the afternoon, even at a point when Carlene would have at that point been missing. They go to the mall, I think like the next day or so, and they're questioning some people. They're asking some kids who play at the local arcade there. And some of the kids said, oh yeah, we saw Carlene here yesterday, the day she was supposed to be there at the mall, that she said she was going to the mall. They said that they actually, they were playing pinball and Carlene stopped and had a conversation with them for like a few minutes and then she left. And then the store where the boyfriend worked confirmed that they also saw employees there saw Carlene in that store and that she had asked for her boyfriend, but he was busy. And so they can confirm that. But after that, there is no, there's no more sightings of her by anyone. Within like 24 hours or so, they go back to the shopping mall again for like the third or fourth time and they're driving around the parking lot and now it's around 1.30 in the morning. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, they see a 1963 white Pontiac station wagon. They see the family station wagon. What's odd is that within like less, within eyesight, is a police officer, a Macon, Georgia police officer, who clearly doesn't see this car sitting here. Because the family pulls up to them and says, hey, are you, are you looking for a 1963 Pontiac station wagon? And, you know, they're like, yeah, we are. Okay, well, it's literally right there. They're like pointing at it with the, like, you can see it from where we're at. And they're like, oh, well, so look at that. Lo and behold, there it is. The driver's side door wasn't closed all the way. It was partially ajar. And then some of the windows were rolled down, which was also unusual because they uh, instilled in Carlene, like anytime you leave that car, you roll up all the windows, you close the doors, you lock the doors. But in the car, there wasn't, from my understanding, there wasn't like her purse or anything like that or the keys to the vehicle. There was nothing in it. And obviously Carlene wasn't there either. They told the police, well, okay, can you investigate this car? Can you, uh, you know, check it for evidence? And they're like, at first they were, the police were like really reluctant to do so. They're like, listen, this is just a case where a teenager just ran out on her own. She'll be back. We don't want to like waste time doing all of this. Can you do it anyway? And so they finally begrudgingly dusted the car for fingerprints, but they came up with nothing. The family had been to that shopping mall in, in the, over the course of that 24 hours, they had been there, especially in the parking lot, countless times. They had several people looking throughout the parking lot. They also had, you know, people who worked there who were close, like friends with Carlene. They were looking for it. Nobody found that car. Suddenly at 1.30 in the morning within 24 hours, now it's there with the door ajar and the windows rolled down. It was obvious that someone had dropped that car off afterwards. So someone had dropped it off well after they searched the parking lot numerous times. And more than likely that person was either aware enough to wear gloves or they wiped off prints from the steering wheel or handles or some, or anything like that. The family firmly believed that at this point foul play has to be involved, that someone had taken Carlene. Someone might have abducted her from that parking lot. And that's probably why whoever took her drop the car back off in the parking lot because they know that's where she was last at when he, he or she took her. 
It took police like literally weeks, I think even like months to actually finally say, oh, okay, this is definitely a missing persons case for sure. Like, but at that point, it's way too late. Like you have, you put no effort into, there was no official police effort into finding her for like several weeks or up to a couple of months. And because of all of that wasted time, her potential possible killer could have done something and moved her body or whatever the case may be, disposed of evidence. Like it's, it's so late now. And really because of that, they're just, the, the case went cold. There was just nothing. They got a couple of phone calls here and there, but the phone calls came from people who were like, all right, so how about that reward money? It was like at the time, only 500 bucks. Uh, that's all the family could you know, raise at the time. This is 1972, different times. People were like, so the reward money, I gave you a tip. We're like, that's not how it works. The tip has to lead to finding her. And then there was even some person who called and said, yeah, I think Carlene's living in my attic because she comes down at night and eats my food. Okay, <laughs> right. The family, after a while, ends up, because they're so devastated by this loss, they end up moving out of Macon, Georgia. And it, they actually took their house phone number and gave it to a neighbor and said, hey, can we set this phone line up here at your house with our old phone number in case Carlene calls? And the neighbor's like, absolutely. And so for the next three years, the family is now no longer in Macon but no calls come into that phone, at least not from Carlene, obviously. And then after three years, the family ends up moving back to Macon, Georgia. By 1981, the family, mainly uh, Carlene's parents, they have a petition filed with the courts to declare Carlene legally dead. The courts look at the evidence and say, there is absolutely the legal presumption of death in this story, unfortunately. And so they granted it and Carlene was declared legally dead in 1981. This is mainly because there was no traces of Carlene ever found. Her social security number hasn't been used. I don't think she had a bank account, so they really couldn't check that. But like she hadn't, she hadn't talked to anyone, called anyone. There had been zero legitimate sightings of her at all over the course of that nine or 10 years. And so it was pretty obvious to everyone that she was likely dead. And the odds are is that she was probably kidnapped, maybe sexually assaulted and murdered that night and then disposed of. If, you, if you're looking at this realistically, based on several other stories very similar to this, you have no choice but to just assume that. This is not the case of a 16 year old girl who just suddenly one day, one afternoon, decided, all right, I'm done with this life and I'm gonna move on. And a 16 year old girl is not gonna be able to just completely erase their prior identity and completely vanish into the ether. Like someone's gonna notice her. It's just, it's not possible. So she is very likely dead. But the problem is, is because no one investigated this from a official standpoint for several months, they have no evidence. They have no real witness statements. They have no testimonies. They have like, they've, I, I want to, I don't even know if they really truly interviewed the boyfriend and said like, Hey, you know, cause it's always like, you always look at the boyfriend or the spouse or the significant other. And I'm not saying he did anything to her. Just, I don't, I just don't know if they actually legitimately looked into him. I do know that he was confirmed to be working on the afternoon she would have already have disappeared. So it's likely not him. This is probably a stranger abduction, but it's just who, when, why, what did they do with her? Where is she? This is, wow, 50 years later. That's crazy that 1972 is about over, over 50 years later now. And there's been nothing, no movements, no, charges, no arrests, no bodies found, no articles of clothing, no purse, no wallet, nothing. Nothing has been found. But somebody somewhere out there has got to know the truth. That somebody may be in their late 60s, early 70s, or maybe up. But, and maybe they've talked and they've said something to someone and maybe that someone is you and maybe you no longer have a relationship or a connection with that person. Maybe you were afraid to come forward because that person was still in your life and maybe they're not anymore and now is the time to come forward. You can report any information you have anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. At the bare minimum, this family deserves to know where she is so they can properly lay her to rest. Because for all they know, Carlene is just alone out there 
underneath a shallow pile of dirt and leaves, maybe alone in a forest somewhere. And that's not right. It's not fair to her. That's not fair to her family. She deserves to be brought back home and she deserves to be, they deserve to be able to pay their respects to her. So if you have any information about the disappearance of Carlene Tangelson, please contact the Macon Police Department at 912-751-7505. Perhaps you could help bring Carlene home and you could help her get the justice she rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case, True Crime, Aruni, Duni, Dingleberry, Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, as usual, please subscribe, give this video a like, hit the bell, follow me over on my TikTok pages if you want to. I tell short form true crime stories over there. The links are in the link tree in the description of this video below. They also pop up here on the screen at some point. I have a merch store. It's also in the link tree below. You can recommend a case for me to cover at my email address. The email address is listed below. Just send me a really quick email with the name, where it happened, when it happened. I'll add it to the list and I will eventually at some point cover it. Do apologize. The videos this, depending on when you're actually seeing this video, if you're watching this as I post it, the videos this week may be shorter than normal. I am having, I am in extreme pain right now. Uh, my entire lower back and it's spreading down to my legs and I'm having a hell of a time. Uh, sitting for uh, even short periods of time is the worst pain. So... I, I may be filming shorter videos this week, so just possibly bear with me, maybe, I'm not sure. May, who knows what happens in the end, but if they're all short this week, that's the reason why. Okay, so I will see you guys for the next video tomorrow. Yeah, all right. Oh, that was, that was stupid. I'll never do that again. I did it again. <laughs>